the end of last week, West Ham United announced that Mark Warburton had left the club via mutual consent. And my initial reaction was, this is good news. This is a fantastic opportunity for David Wallace. It might also be a fantastic opportunity for Mark Warburton as well. The reasons that the club have given was that Warburton wishes to go get a more senior role, a more prominent role at a football club. And, you know, best of luck to him. I've got nothing against him, really, and I'm sure he'll go get you. He's got a fine footballing CV. We'll get on to that one in just a second, because I know what some of you are thinking. I know it. I can hear it. Well, I can't. But I know what you're thinking. But I will address it in just a minute. However, from last season to next season, there's going to have to be changes at West Ham. David Moyes is going to have to make some alterations. And a change in his backroom staff is not something I really expected, if I'm honest with you. Collectively, they just won the Conference League. And there's never been a summer of stability for David Moyes. After his first full season, Alan Irvine left. Then it was Stuart Pearce's turn. Now it's Mark Warburton's turn. So David Moyes will not go a summer at West Ham where his coaching team remains intact. There's always at least one major adjustment there. And it's Warburton leaving this time. But in regards to changes, something's got to give. And I think Warburton leaving presents David Moyes a fantastic opportunity to continue pushing the reset button, in all honesty. But what we're going to do now is going to go back 12 months because... When Mark Warburton was announced as a coach at West Ham United, I was delighted. I thought it was a coup for West Ham. We were essentially hiring a championship standard manager as part of our coaching team. And naively, I thought, well, this has got to be a good thing, hasn't it? He was at Brentford. He did well there. He just had disagreements regarding how data-driven they are. They were wanting to buy players through numbers. Mark Warburton's a bit old school, a traditionalist, and he would prefer go scout players, pick his own players, understand why there's a disagreement. So he left for that reason. Did okay at Rangers, did okay at QPR. But the reason I felt that was a bit of a coup is because, you know, he could get another championship manager's job. He was going to. That's how he ended up at West Ham. But not only that, there was... His style of play was different to what David Moyes' style of play was at West Ham. We'd just come off the back of a season finishing seventh, Europa League semi-finalist. Mark Warburton's comes in. There's talk of West Ham changing up for the following season, the season we've just had. Warburton coming in suggested that this was going to be the case. Warburton's style was a little bit slower. It's more possession-based than what we'd seen under David Moyes at West Ham. So I thought, this is, this is a good appointment. I feel like I'm incorrect now, but naively... But obviously since then, uh, the story came out that you know David Sullivan had his mitts all over the proposed takeover at Birmingham City. The person that was trying to purchase Birmingham, David Sullivan was partially funding him. And one of the things they were going to do at Birmingham City was appoint Mark Warburton as the manager. That was falling through or stalling at least. So David Sullivan now knew that Mark Warburton, here he is, he's out of work. He's looking for a job. Well, I'll just take him and uh, we'll just bung him in at West Ham. So it hasn't worked out too much. But the reason I feel like this is a good appointment because it's not very often you get an insight into the roles of coaches at clubs, especially Premier League clubs. And I'm not against that, by the way. I, I think it's more, for me, it's more, you know, you win, you draw and you lose as a team, as a coaching team. And it's up to the manager that to manage those coaches, make sure he's got the right people in the right place at the right time. And if that's not the case, then you're going to have to make alterations to your coaching setup. The coaches have to bring something different to the table and Mark Warburton being different to David Moyes wasn't a concern of mine because arguably I think that's a good thing I think if you've got a different voice a different opinion in your coaching team that can be really beneficial if utilized correctly but what we did a couple of months ago now we got a bit of a rare insight into the coaching team's responsibilities at West Ham via Kevin Nolan Kevin Nolan did an interview and within that interview, Nolan stated that it's Mark Warburton's responsibility to analyse our upcoming opponents. So Mark Warburton was the man responsible for taking a look at who West Ham were going to play in their next fixture, identifying their strengths, identifying their weaknesses, possibly coming up with the game plan to counteract what they are good at and to take advantage of what they're not so good at. And then put that into place on the training ground so that comes Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, we see that. We see the benefits of Mark Warburton scouting. Well, this is where I feel it's a good opportunity. You can see where I'm going with this one, can't you? Didn't really feel that. <laughs> Didn't really feel that last season that um, we identified strengths or weaknesses from the. There was some games, right? I'm not going to go through them, but there was some games where, well, we tweaked our tact. We, we might have played the same formation, but our tactics were tweaked slightly within that formation to try and counteract what the other team had. But it was few and far between, and there was too many examples... And it was the hidings like Brighton and Newcastle where 
Brighton in particular, where we just played right into the hand. We did what De Zerbi wanted. Honestly, it felt like Warburton had gone and watched how Brighton had played and gone back to Moyes and say, this is exactly what we shouldn't do. And we carried that out, really. Um, we couldn't have made it easier for Brighton if we tried. We Our tactics were set up for Brighton to take advantage of. But I didn't. we didn't know who was responsible at this point until Kevin Nolan gave that interview. But the one... When you, when you look at it black and white, really cold, which is not really something you should do in football, but let's just take a look at it from a results-based business here. You know, we finished six, Irvine leaves, finished seven, Stuart Pierce leaves, Warburton comes in at this point, and we lose 20 of our 38 Premier League games. It's not a great look for the person responsible for scouting the opposition. Now, it's not that simple. That's why I said it's a cold, cold look at it. There's a lot more to take into consideration. But I don't think it makes Warburton look great. And there was rumours a third the way through the season, uh, around about the World Cup time, there was rumours that Warburton wasn't clicking with some of the senior players at West Ham. Who those were, I don't know. They were not named. It was just that Warburton perhaps didn't have that chemistry and some of the senior players at West Ham didn't take kindly to Mark Warburton for whatever reason. It was left as a very generic rumour like that for you to make up your own assumptions. And that's why I take those with a pinch of salt, because I think, well, what is it then? Why? Who doesn't like Warburton? Why don't they like Warburton? Rather than just senior players aren't getting on great with Warburton, what does that mean exactly? But you always got the vibe that he didn't hadn't really settled in as much as we perhaps would have liked. So when the news came out that Warburton left, I thought, well, it's, it doesn't feel like a loss. Um, obviously, he's part of the coaching team has won the Conference League, though. But... Alan Irvine felt like a loss. When he left, it was a bit like, right, what we're going to do now? Because we've just finished six. He's left. Now what? I have to be honest with you. I'm, I don't have that feeling with Stuart Pearce. And as I've seen, there's a lot of people suggesting we go get Stuart Pearce to replace Mark Warburton. I'm a little bit sceptical about that because that season before last, it's tricky when you're in pre-season. Last season, are we referring to the one that's just done or the one before that? So the one before that, when we finished 7th and we got to the Europa League semi-final. Now, this is going to sound mental. Bear in mind, I've just said we finished 7th and got to the Europa League semi-final. But the second half of that season in the Premier League, the football wasn't particularly great. The results weren't great either. And now we're sort of like, you know, last season we spoke about like the the rot or the or poor run of forms. You could take it all the way back to the previous season. And Stuart Pearce was here for that. That's why when it comes to sort of these, let's get Pearce back, I'm a little bit hesitant because I think, well, hang on a minute. He was still here when we weren't doing great. At the end of the season, seventh in a Europa League semi-final sounds good. But for those that watched West Ham for 90 minutes week in, week out, it wasn't that pretty. It wasn't as good as the end result suggests. And Pearce was still here for a little bit of that. But what this does is give David Moyes the opportunity to continue pushing the reset button, I think. Now, this is where you've just got to swallow the bitter pill and stomach that David Moyes is here next season. Regard, put your personal opinion to one side as whether you want him to stay or not. That's what I'm doing here. My opinion about whether Moyes should be here or not, it's over there for now. Moyes is staying. So, how do we get the best out of David Moyes next season? First of all, he needs to recruit the the coach, not David Sullivan. He Moyes needs to be responsible for it. But second of all, maybe the last third of the season, West Ham pushed the reset button. We know that. Moyes has spoken about it. Antonio has spoken about it quite a lot and very publicly. But Antonio has spoken about it, how we try to do this and we've gone back to the way we used to play. Noble spoken about how we tried to transition, hasn't quite worked out. So at some point, the reset was, button was pushed on the training ground where David Moyes went, right, that's enough. We're going back to what we know. We're going back to counter-attacking football. We're going back to defending 10 yards further back we're, we're going back to how we used to play and I think that's what Moyes has got to do next season Moyes has got to stick to what he knows it's not going to be pretty it's perhaps not going to be enjoyable when you see the players we're linked with it would suggest that we're going to continue doing how we finish the end of the season and I get it I get why Moyes would because form wise we were in good form at the end of the season we picked up some decent enough results we got the points on the board that we needed to climb the table we won the conference league i get why Moyes is going to say right we're just going to continue as we are at the start of next season forget the transition forget the possession based football we're just going to do what we know works best and if that's the case and that's what i think he should do 
not why want my opinions over here my opinion it's still over here that's what i want to see over there what i think moy should do is two separate things what i think moy should do is just stick to what he knows best the, the football that got a sixth and seventh in the Premier League, just go back to that as much as you can. And in doing so, that leads into player recruitment, but we're parking that for a little bit. But that also leads into coach recruitment. That leads into who replaces Mark Warburton. Just go get someone that sings off the same hymn sheet as you. Ideally, Alan Irvine. But if, he, if you can't get him back, and bear in mind, it's changed now. When he went back up north for family reasons, I get it completely. But Moy still had two years to go on his contract at West Ham. Is that right? We've had three years to go? Two years. I think there was two full years. Um, that uh, I'm getting muddled up. Even I'm getting muddled up now with last season and the season before now. But at least there was at least two years on David Moyes' contract still remaining. There's only 12 months now. The, the proposal to Alan Irvine would be different than it was when Alan Irvine decided to quit West Ham. He would have looked at it and thought, I'm not doing another 24 months of this. Could he do another 10 months? Essentially, while there's still 12 months to go to his contract, he wouldn't be required until July. And by the end of May, he, he's gone again kind of thing. So it's not a full calendar year that we need him for. Could he get him back? Hopefully. It might be Stuart Pearce. Um, if that's who Moyes chooses, great. That's the important thing that Moyes chooses him. But also, like I said, just keep pushing the reset button. I think that's what we need to do. Moyes just goes back to what we were doing at the end of last season. And Mark Warburton leaving, I think, will really benefit David Moyes. And it gives him a really good opportunity to get someone in. Right person, right place, right time. It's important. If Moyes gets this this appointment right, it'll make the world a difference. I'm a big believer that a manager's coaching team is arguably more important than the manager in some regards. The manager's job is to listen to those around him, to trust those around him, to use each person's area of expertise and collectively come up with a game plan for the following game and get the three points that's the manager's job it's making sure you've got the right people behind you this appointment will be crucial to will it be as important as replacing Declan Rice no but this appointment will be very very important to David Boys and the success or perhaps lack of next season at West Ham United but what I will not do is uh, get overly excited like I did when Warburton came in so uh, yeah Feel a bit silly doing that one, but I stand by it. He's got a really good footballing CV. I, I've got no doubt that Mark War Warburton will be possibly be a championship manager next season somewhere. I don't know where, but if that's what he's after, and it sounds like that's what he's after, he'll get one. His CV's good enough. Unfortunately, at West Ham, it didn't really sound like it worked out for him. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I know Gonzo covered this last week, but we had similar-ish views, and I thought I'm just... Half the video will be repeating what Gonzo said in the sense that it's a good opportunity. We have to get the right coach in. Moyes must appoint the, the coach and not David Sullivan. But um, yeah, I just wanted to chuck my tuppence in because like I said, he was responsible for scouting the opposition. Well, that's a vacancy at West Ham now. Can't really get worse, can we? Anyway, enjoy the video. If you have, please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up. Subscribe to Hammers Chat. Catch you tomorrow. Yeah.